I'm Phyllis Horns. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Health Sciences at East Carolina University, and it is a very big pleasure for me to be able to be here today and to welcome you to this ribbon cutting. Uh, this has been several months in the making and obviously is a very important part of the dental school and its initiatives in uh, communities like this one across the state and so uh, we're just thrilled that we have a chance to partner with the uh, with our colleagues at Davidson Community College and throughout the Davidson uh, community college uh, community and surrounding areas it's it's really uh, something that East Carolina University uh, appreciates takes seriously recognizes the huge opportunity that we have to strengthen dental education and prepare future dentists for our state that really and truly understand the needs in rural communities and we think that that is a huge part of the dental education model that we have put in place at our new dental school. So it's a pleasure for me to be here and I do bring you greetings on behalf of our Chancellor, Dr. Steve Ballard, who was not able to be here today, and all of ECU's leadership uh, who have been champions and, and enthusiastic cheerleaders for the work of the dental school to this juncture and will continue to be so as we continue to open our community service learning centers across the state. So it's a pleasure for me to be here and thank you so much for having us and for being so welcoming and such engaging partners. Uh, we're going to do a lot of thank yous today. So uh, I, sometimes we think that there's no one in the audience who didn't get their name called when we do one of these events. But we think that's very important for us to do because there have been so many people who have worked very hard to make today possible and we certainly want to recognize everyone appropriately. So I'm going to start with some recognitions and then uh, Dr. Chadwick is the main hero today so he will be up uh, thanking some other people and we will um, conclude with uh, some refreshments and uh, tours. So I want to acknowledge, first of all, Dr. Mary Ritling, who's going to be speaking uh, later, president of David Com Davidson Community College. Uh, I think our partnership with Dr. Ritling and the entire community college leadership has been absolutely critical and instrumental to our being able to be here today. Also want to recognize uh, Ms. Fiona Lazimi. Yes. Uh, back there, I said it almost right, didn't I? Yep. Okay, Lazimi, representing Congressman Richard Hudson, uh, Mr. Mike Finley, representing uh, Senator Richard Burr, right here on the front row, Representative Rain Brown on the front row, and she's an ECU graduate, so we're so thrilled uh, to see, see you here. And uh, Representative uh, Roger Yance in the front row as well, and we certainly appreciate your presence and thank you for your support. And then i uh, also like to, represent, to um, uh, recognize a former NC representative, uh, Mr. Hugh Holloman, who's in the second row. And Mr. Holloman was absolutely instrumental in our being able to get the, the legislation to create the dental school, Mr. Holloman. So we're so thrilled that you could be here today. Also want to recognize Dr. Stuart Fountain from the North Carolina Board of Community Colleges. There he is back there. Thank you for being here, sir. Uh, we appreciate the partnership. From our Board of Trustees, uh, Mr. Bob Plyban, uh, who's from Greensboro, and thank you, Bob, for your presence. And also a former chair of our board, Mr. Steve Shoferty, who is also from uh, Greensboro. Steve, uh, really thank you for your leadership and for your assistance in the past uh, with this. Uh, Mr. Bill Steed from the ECU Board of Visitors. Um, Bill? Uh, there he is. Thank you for being here. And also, Mr. Ernest Lodgeman. I'm, I didn't. I, I, I massacred that. How, how do you say it? Logeman. Logeman. Mr. Ernest Logeman. I'll get it right next time. Thank you, sir. Glad you're here. Uh, also, we have from ECU uh, uh, Mr. Mark Nateston, who is our new uh, uh, president of the ECU and Me Medical and Health Sciences Foundation. I th know he's getting to know quite a few people here today. I'd like to, rep to welcome Dr. Lori Morrow, superintendent of Davidson Public Schools. Dr. Morrow. Okay. Uh, doc uh, Mr. Rick Kreisky, superintendent of Lexington City Schools. See him. Uh, I don't see Terry Holland. Uh, Mayor Ken Rothmeyer from uh, the city of Bermuda Run. There. Did I get that one almost right? Close enough. 
Close enough. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Mayor Joe Bennett from the city of Thomasville. There he is. We're so glad that you're here, Mayor. Mr. Tobin Shepard from the city of Lexington, Councilman. Okay, thank you for being here. Arr. Arr. Hey, you got it. <laughs> January 3rd, be sure you're helping us with that. Uh, again, thank you all for being here, and I would like to introduce our, uh, our leader for the School of Dental Medicine, Dr. Greg Chadwick. Thank you, Dr. Horns. It really is a privilege uh, to not only serve as the dean, but to be able to take part in this uh, occasion today as we officially open ECU School of Dental Medicine Community Service Learning Center, Davidson County. The ECU School of Dental Medicine was established in part to educate and increase the number of primary care dentists in our state and to give educational opportunities to individuals from historically underrepresented groups and underserved areas, and to provide and enhance health services for underserved North Carolinians through the creation of community-oriented service learning interprofessional collaborations. In the past two and a half years, uh, we have opened community service learning centers in Ahoski, Elizabeth City, Lillington, and Silva, and now these four community service learning centers are very busy places. They've provided care from patients from at least 71 North Carolina counties. That's 71 percent of the counties uh, in North Carolina. Last week we held a ribbon cutting for community service learning center Robeson County in Robeson County south of uh, Fayetteville near Lumberton. Uh, later on we will be opening up uh, Silva but today we're here to celebrate uh, Davidson County and the launch the new community service learning center here in this community as we further expand access to oral health care. The legislature made improved oral health a priority with the establishment of the ECU School of Dental Medicine and today that vision is a little closer to reality. The discussions and the decisions that brought us here today have taken place over many years and involve many individuals, many of whom are here today and can rightfully claim a role in the dental school and certainly in Community Service Learning Center, Davidson County. Vice Chancellor Horns has already acknowledged a number of key individuals and entities, and I have the privilege of being able to mention a, a few more. Those of you here from this community know there's a core group of local individuals in this region that stand out for their vision, their commitment, and their determination to make today a reality. One individual stands out amongst all of those because without her leadership, we would not be here today on this particular site. That individual is Davidson County Community College President Mary Ritland. And we'll be hearing from her in a few minutes. We want to thank Dr. Ritling and the Davidson County Community College Board of Trustees and the Davidson County Community College Foundation Board of Directors for providing the land for this community service learning center and for their exceptional support throughout this project. Would uh, President Ritling, would you and your Board of Trustees and your Foundation Board please stand and let us thank you. This center certainly would not be here without these, without these people, plus many more, as you will see. We'd also like to thank Ms. Manisha Thomas, Davidson County Director of Public Health. I'm going to have them stand in just a minute. Mr. Robert Hyatt, Davidson County Manager, and Mr. Leighton Long, the former Davidson County Public Health Director, who's now in Chatham County as the Director of Public Health. So was with your vision and your leadership, we're central in keeping oral health as a resource here for people that need it. Would you three please stand and let us thank you as well. We'll be hearing from Manisha in a few minutes as well. A tremendous amount of thanks 
also goes to the Davidson County, uh, County Board of Commissioners who wholeheartedly supported our project and oral health and who provided the generous funding to improve the parking lot that we are on right now and move it and move it to the uh, I guess is to the west. We'll be hearing from County Commission Vice Chair Steve Jarvis in a few minutes and we'd like to ask the commissioners to please stand and be recognized and I'll call their names and let's hold our applause until they've all uh, until they're all standing. Uh, Todd Yates who is the chair who is not able to be with us today. Uh, Steve Jarvis Lance Barrett, Fred McClure, Larry Potts, Steve Shell, and Don Truell. Thank you all very much. I'd also like to recognize a very special person, Ms. Linda Swan who is here representing her family today, and to thank Ms. Swan and the Smith family for establishing endowment, the Edward C. Smith Sr. Patient Care Fund, in memory of her father, Mr. Edward C. Smith Sr. This endowment will play a huge role in supporting this community service learning center and ensuring access to improved oral health for many people in Davidson County and this community. Thank you so much. Could you please thank Lewis and the Please, Lewis, right there. Thank you. I lost you for a minute. The last time I saw you, you were over here. So. <laughs> Partnerships and collaborations in communities where our community service learning centers are located are essential. Some key partners in Davidson County, both individuals and groups, uh, I'm going to call a few names and with either the representatives from those groups or those groups, uh, please stand and we'll recognize you when we have, uh, have mentioned a few of them. The first one uh, is a very special person who is not here with us, and that's Ms. Jenny Varner, Vice President, External Affairs and Executive Director, Davidson County Community College Foundation. Jenny was absolutely essential from day one, or even actually probably day minus one, uh, in making sure that we got to see uh, the right people and that the conversations that needed to be held uh, were held. So uh, we appreciate all of her efforts and certainly want to recognize those. The Davidson County Board of Health, if uh, those of you are on the D Davidson County Board of Health would stand as well. Davidson Works, Workforce Development Board, Davidson County Economic Development Commission, Ms. Sandy Motley, Director of the Davidson Medical Ministries, Sandy here? There she is. Mr. Doug Croft, President of Thomasville Area Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Croft. And Mr. Burr Sullivan, President of Lexington Area Chamber of Commerce. We want to thank and recognize all of these individuals. <laughs> there are many others uh, who are here with us today we'd like to honor as well. Some of them have driven a little bit farther. And please stand as I call your name. Uh, Dr. Mark Casey, Dental Director, Division of Medi Medical Assistance in Raleigh. Mark. Ms. Sarah Tomlinson, North Carolina Oral, Sec Oral Health Section Chief. Dr. Michael Tensa, Central Region Dental Supervisor, North Carolina Oral Health Section. Dr. Martha Taylor, Prevention and School Health Branch, Head, North Carolina Oral Health Section, and the North Carolina Office of Rural Health and Community Care. And that office has been a steadfast companion of ours since we started talking about a dental school. Is there anybody here from the Office of Rural Health? Anyway, let's thank all of these individuals. <laughs> Another significant partner that we want to recognize and thank is the North Carolina Air Area Health Education Centers, better known as AHEC. Several regions in our state across the, uh, several regions in the state are helping us as we establish the community service learning centers in providing housing for our, uh, for our students. And we're tremendously grateful to those, uh, to those uh, regions of AHEC because our students, as they rotate throughout the state, they'll go to three community service learning centers 
and they'll spend eight weeks at each one of those community service learning centers. So that's, that's quite a, a, a housing burden for AHEC, and we appreciate AHEC's support in that. Uh, representing AHEC today is uh, Michael Lischke, uh, Director of the Northwest uh, Area Health Education Center, and Ms. Angela Hodges, Program Coordinator, Office of Rural Primary Care, also with Northwest AHEC. Are they here today? There. Thank you. <laughs> After the ribbon cutting, as you enter the building, I hope that you'll note the poster that's to the left of the door as you go in, and you're going to see many of the organizations that have played a role in building and developing this building that you'll see here, uh, that you'll see here today. I especially want to recognize the design team of EYP BJAC, led by Jennifer Amster. I don't believe Jennifer, Jennifer is with us today, but Steve Carell is here representing a, uh, BJAC and EYP. Steve, thank you. <laughs> and our facilities team, led by Vice Chancellor Rick Nicewander and Associate Vice Chancellors Bill Bagnell and Scott Buck, are not able to be with us, but I believe Bill Chatfield is here today. Is Bill here? In the back of the room. Thank you, Bill. And certainly uh, noteworthy for this particular building, Mr. Chuck Tatum, Vice President of Construction with Tyler II, the construction company that built this beautiful building. Thank you. I'd also like to take a moment, and I don't see him, but I know he's here, uh, Dr. Mike Schultz. Where is Mike? Right here in front of me, okay. Yeah. I certainly want to be looking at Mike when I say this. Mike is our Assistant Dean for Extramural Clinical Affairs, and it's been his tireless, tireless efforts uh, that help us develop these, uh, develop the sites, select the sites, build the buildings, begin to get them operationalized, help hire the, uh, the staff, the faculty, just to make sure everything goes right. As a matter of fact, I think he was down here last Friday cutting up cardboard boxes and everything to get them out of the way so when you go on the tour today, uh, the building will look presentable. So, Mike, thank you for everything you do uh, to make our community service learning centers successful. I'd also like to recognize Ms. Peggy Novotny, Director of External Affairs, and where is Peggy? There she is in the back. She's responsible for everything from the tent to the invitations to making sure everything uh, came together today at uh, 2 o'clock. And Ms. Kristen Ward, our Direc Director of Development, Kristen. Emily Craven, Director of Student Services, and I don't believe, is Emily here? Here he is. Stand up, Emily. <laughs> And Leslie Baysmore, our executive assistant, who is back in, in Greenville today. Will you all please stand one more time, including Mike, and let us recognize you and thank you. <laughs> now, you all realize that the dental school is going on, and this is getting toward the, uh, the end of the semester. But we have a few of our students who are from this region uh, who are able to get away for a few hours to share some time with us uh, today. I'd like to recognize and please stand Kristen Carter, who is a fourth year dental student from Guilford County. Please stay standing. Dana Luckhart, a D4 from Guilford County as well. And Lauren Moles, a third year dental student from Randolph County. Thank you all for making the trip. And I'm hoping that all three of them at some point will have an opportunity to spend a little time here in this particular community service learning center. Our, our, this is a big year for ECU and that we will graduate our first class. So when we talk about D4s, those are fourth year dental students. So Kristen and Diana will probably be, will be graduating this year, but may be graduating before we, before we, gosh, I didn't mean to spill the beans on that one here, yeah. They will, they will likely be graduating before, before, uh, uh, before we operate, you know, fully operationalize this, but hopefully they will have an opportunity to spend some time in this particular community service learning center. After the program today, I hope each one of you will take a few minutes to engage in conversation with our dental students. And I think if you do, you'll see how excited we are to have representatives of our of all four classes 
uh, like we see here today. When you, when you meet young people like this that are so enthusiastic about oral health, our profession, and graduating, that uh, you know, you'll see why we're in such good shape uh, and the future of, uh, future of dentistry in North Carolina is, uh, is in good shape. Our dental school is a statewide resource with a statewide footprint and the community service learning centers are a significant part of extending the presence across North Carolina. These centers are an integral part of our education system at the dental school and they're staffed by our dental faculty, residents, and other dental professionals who will live here in Davidson County. They'll work here in Davidson County providing much needed care for local citizens who do not have a dentist or access to regular dental care. With our community service learning centers, we're taking dental education and our dental school to our patients in rural and underserved areas of the state. By late 2015, we'll have eight community service learning centers serving North Carolina. So between now and then, between now and late next year, uh, we will open a center in Spruce Pine. That will be at the end, rough, roughly at the end of January. We'll be opening Spruce Pine, and then late next year, Brunswick County in the far southeastern part of the state will open uh, as well. Another huge partners across the state are the practicing dentists, uh, who have been very supportive of our school, very supportive of the community service learning centers. And we hope that many of those faculty will be part-time faculty in, I mean, many of those practicing dentists will spend some time in the community service learning centers or in our school in Greenville and will become part-time uh, faculty for us. I know there's a number of dentists that have been instrumental in getting us to the, you know, to this point here. I want to just mention uh, a few, and that one is Mark Davis, who was in on the very first conversations here. Mark is on the uh, Davidson County Community College Board of Trustees, but he was very instrumental in working with the folks at Public Health uh, and beginning to help us engage in those, con you know, in those conversations. Another one I recognize here is Dr. Tommy Smith, who uh, we were in dental school together. He's practiced uh, in this area for a, uh, for a number of years as well. I see another of other familiar faces. So would all the, de and Terry Bowman, would all the, other, would all the dentists in the, in the room please stand and let us recognize you. <laughs> if you've not already had a chance to meet Dr. Ryan Cook, our Director of General Dentistry here at Davidson County, I want to introduce him. Ryan, would you please stand? And I understand his wife was not able to come with him today, but Dr. Cook, um, is a native North Carolinian who was raised in the Charlotte area and uh, has been educated here in North Carolina, but also uh, University of Texas, San Antonio, has practiced in California and he's come back home. He's got roots here in Davidson County and he's come back home to practice. So we welcome you back and look forward to everybody in this room getting to know, uh, getting to know Ryan. There'll also be an assistant director um, and we're right in the process of finalizing that contract uh, as we speak. And uh, I think you'll all recognize this individual and hopefully we'll be able to make an announcement very shortly as soon as that, uh, you know, as soon as the, the paperwork is signed. But I think you'll be very pleased uh, to see that this is a dentist who has practiced in this area for some time and will be able to, to bring some of that expertise to our students uh, in, this, uh, in this community service learning center. Also, a great deal of gratitude goes to Gary Fuquay, Robert Powell, and Rob Nelson, who make up the team at Fuquay Solutions. And they've worked for four or five years with us to help identify the sites and the partnerships for our community service learning centers. And I believe Robert Powell is with us today. Robert, would you please stand up and be recognized? And as we get into managing a number of dental clinics, I also want to recognize Dr. Richard Dest. Is Richard here? I don't think Richard made it yet. Uh, Dest Management is helping us with the, uh, the management of a number of these uh, community service learning centers. And uh, we appreciate their office management and marketing expertise. I'd also like to thank the ECU alumni who have joined us here today. 
and I, I think there's probably more than we may realize as we hear an org come, or something like that coming out of the uh, counting uh, out of the audience. But we certainly appreciate your support, and I'd like to especially thank uh, Steve Schofity, former board of trustees member who was actually on the board of trustees uh, when we uh, uh, when we got the dental school when we decided to go to the legislature uh, to begin to present our case. So Steve, it's especially good to have you and Bob Bob Plyben as well. It's nice to have both of you here. Would all ECU alums in the uh, audience please stand? Whoa! <laughs> Very good. Hopefully when we say that in about 10 years, we can say all dental alums. <laughs> and you'll have some of them right here. You'll get to meet them in a, in a few minutes. And now I'd like to invite a couple very uh, special individuals to share a few more remarks uh, with us. I'm very pleased to be able to introduce someone who in this audience really needs no introduction, and that's Davidson County Community College, Mary Ritling. And as I said before, without her leadership and her vision for this region, and most of all, her tenacity, by helping us, <laughs> her tenacity, by having a vision, of this partnership and continuing to explore options until we're really able to create uh, a win-win. Uh, this, this building and this opportunity would not be possible. She was passionate from the start about the CSLC being a re resource uh, for this community. Mary, we're so glad to be able to be serving the people of this region alongside of you. At this time, I'd like to invite her to bring a few words of greeting to us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Chadwick. I don't know if you can you hear me. It's good. All right. Well, let me tell you about this little story. So it was a cold winter's night in January, and I was invited to the public health department, and uh, Dr. Chadwick was there, Robert was there, and they had this dream. And the dream was that, that we needed a dental clinic in Davidson County. And they said, so Mary, let's, how are we going to make that happen? And I said, well, we'll just have some angel dust or something spread, and it's all going to work out great. But they had a dream, and they had a vision. And more importantly, they recognized that the citizens in our county needed assistance. And they wanted to go out to the people versus the people always going to a resource. And I thought that was marvelous and the most wonderful thing we could do because it's better to bring the water to somebody than to have them come to the water, right? And so it's better for us to have the services in our community and make sure that our children and our adults and those who are less fortunate have a chance to have their care given to them on a daily basis. So Jenny was with me and we're listening to this wonderful story and heard about this incredible facility that was gonna be on this campus. We get in the car and Jenny said, looks at me and she says, so what do you think? And I says, oh, it's gonna happen. It's, it will make it happen. And she says, well, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna convince everybody? And I said, this is no convincing. This is a no brainer that when they hear the story and they hear the reason why we're gonna make it happen. And really through the um, community efforts and working as a community, that's why that clinic is here today. So our board of trustee members, you know, they are used to my bird brain ideas to begin with. And so I went to Beth Parrott, who was the chair, where's Beth, of our board of trustees at the time and told her about this idea. And she said, oh yeah, we can make it happen. And so Like Minds got together and we found some land. After a little looking around, we found some land. And then through the compliments of our commissioners, they also supported us in expanding the parking lot. And so here we are today with an incredible resource for our community. So on a selfish level, you know, I'm in, gonna really enjoy this new partnership with East Carolina University, but I'm a little confused about what colors I have to wear now. <laughs> so, um, you know, I figured, you know, I'm gonna have, you know, Davidson blue here and purple here, and then on certain days, I'm gonna have to wear that pin and then switch it around or do whatever. But the reality is it's gonna happen because it's a partnership, it's a collaboration. And the most important word in our title, I always say about the community college is the word community. If we think together for the benefit of each other, great things happen, right? 
All right, and this is an example of it. So I also want to thank the Board of Trustees. I particularly wanted to thank Beth Peer as chair at the time when we had this idea for her tireless efforts in making this happen, driving around on the golf cart and picking out little pieces of land that might work. I also want to thank Dr. Mark Davis. Mark gave me um, the positive push all the time and said this is going to be great for the community. We really need it. And as a practicing dentist, he truly knew that. Uh, our foundation board members who always through their financial support stand behind the college whenever we need it. I can't thank them enough and I believe they've all been recognized. But I'd ask the trustees in the foundation board for me to stand up so I can salute you. Please stand again. So this is the time of year that we give a little reflection on campus and I know you do in your own lives. And we realize how fortunate we are to be able to work with students we see every day, that we're based in a community that believes in helping others and believes in education. And my guess is that all of you feel that spirit in this room today as we celebrate a gift that will mean so much to so many citizens in Davidson County and in the surrounding area. On behalf of Davidson County Community College, we welcome you on our campus, East Carolina University and our partners. And we look forward to many more celebrations with all of you here today as we work to make our community an even better place in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rittling. And we look forward to a long and productive uh, relationship and partnership uh, in the community uh, through education and service. Mr. Steve Jarvis is vice, uh, vice chair of the Davidson County Board of Commissioners. We're very grateful to the commissioners for making health a priority for the residents of Davidson County. Please. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of Chairman Yates, I would like to just express, he wanted me to express his regret for not being able to be here. Also, Chairman Potts. Uh, was under the weather and not able to make it. One other gentleman that was on the commissioners at the time in which uh, the vote was taken is Mr. Sam Wofford. I'd like for him to stand along with all the other commissioners. Fred McClure, please. <laughs> on behalf of all the commissioners, I would like to say it's a great day in Davidson County. I think it's, it's been a long time coming since 2010. The county through the Board of Health uh, under the direction of Leighton Long, as has already been spoken, uh, as well as the Community College, DCCC, and other organizations assisting East Carolina University to find a suitable piece of land in which to construct a dental community service learning center. After examining several options, a site was selected on the main campus of DCCC. That's where we're at today. However, financial assistance was requested and the county seemed fit to help with that in the extent of somewhere around $300,000 for the parking. One of the major reasons that ECU Dental School was selected for Davison County as a desirable location, one of the community service learning centers, it's unfortunately due to the fact that we were identified as a shortage of dentists and dental services in our community. I want to thank all the folks with ECU and the dental school who recognized this need and made the decision to come to Davidson County. I want to thank Dr. Ridling, the Davidson County DCCC Board for having the vision and the wisdom to bring this facility to this campus. And finally, I want to say that I thank all who have played a big hand in the project, bringing the project to completion on behalf of the untold numbers of Davidson County residents who will benefit from dental services provided through this learning center in the years to come. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Mr. Jarvis. <clears throat> Ms. Manisha Thomas, Davidson County Public Health Director, has provided guidance and support for our Community Service Learning Center for several years. She, and maybe along with Leighton Long, uh, know the oral health and the health needs of this, this area and this region better than anyone else. And we look forward to working closely with Manisha and the Public Health Department. And I'd like to invite Manisha to share a few remarks with us. Manisha. Um, good afternoon. First and foremost, I'd like to just share a couple of comments with you on behalf of the Davidson County Health Department. First, not everyone in our community has the same access to good health and the opportunity to make healthy choices. Oral health is very important, but for many, access and affordability are obstacles that cannot be overly, over, excuse me, that cannot be easily overcome. Davidson County is, of course, recognized as a medically underserved area with a shortage of primary care, mental, and dental health providers. Dental issues are one of the leading non-emergency diagnoses in our hospital emergency departments. And in North Carolina, there is an average of 4.4 dentists per 10,000 residents. And in Davidson County, that number is much lower. So many of you are here today have advocated for this dental clinic. And I wanna thank again my predecessor, Mr. Layton Long, who also advocated in this area for one of the community service learning centers um, in this county. It should be noted that until July of this year, the Davidson County Health Department did operate a dental clinic for pediatric patients. Unfortunately, the Health Department was not able to continue to provide these services. But as a public health agency, we are pleased to know that the East Carolina Community Service Learning Center will be available to provide services to pediatric patients as well as adults and to help North Carolina move towards dental goals outlined by the Department of Health and Human Services and the Division of Public Health. Part of the East Carolina University mission is to transform healthcare and promote wellness. The Davidson County Health Department is pleased to be partnering with this Community Service Learning Center, and we look forward to an opportunity to continue a strong partnership to help meet the dental needs of our community. And at this time, I would like to ask the Davidson County Board of Health members to please stand. Um, a lot of these individuals were advocates along with Mr. Layton Long, my predecessor, and I'd just like to have them be recognized one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha, and thank you to all of our, our speakers. A key to our success will be the continued enthusiasm and support of all the people of this region and of our state who have helped make today a reality. I know one question in people's minds are, when are you gonna start seeing patients? Uh, it will probably be after the 1st of February. Uh, during January, we'll be continuing. We have some more supplies that will be coming in. We'll also be uh, hiring additional staff. Uh, probably about the middle of January, we'll be making appointments and then begin to screen, uh, begin screening patients and then start to see patients somewhere after the 1st of uh, February. And I see Ryan and Mike shaking their heads yes, so I'm pretty close on that. But it's a little, it's a little flexible at this point here. Thanks to everyone for attending today and for working to improve oral health in North Carolina. We look forward to being your neighbor here in Davidson County. Momentarily, we'll cut the ribbon to officially open the center. We'd like to invite all of our speakers other special guests and elected officials to join us as we cut the ribbon over in front of the uh, over in front of the building. Following the ribbon cut, ribbon cutting, you're all invited to enjoy refreshments over here to my right, to your left, and also to come inside, take a tour of the Community Service Learning Center, and most of all, get to meet Dr. Cook, staff members, and students uh, who will be located inside the Community Service Learning Center. So again. Thank you, and we do look forward to being your neighbor.